With the arrival of the Nikon ZF, I'm sure many of you have been asking, what is the difference between this new camera from Nikon and the legendary Nikon DS? Nikon sold millions of them. So a lot of you are asking us, shall I upgrade to the new shiny camera? Well, stick with us to find out. Nikon DF was launched on November the 5th, 2013. So it's been 10 years since this camera came out. And the reception for Nikon DF was quite mixed at the time. A lot of people called it a Marmite camera, where some people loved just the design of it, the knobs and dials and everything. And some people couldn't get on with it because it was very different from the modern Nikon DSLR design. 10 years on, we have the ZF. We've also had the ZFC, which is the DX or APS-C little brother of the ZF. So we've become a little bit more accustomed, I would say, to this, this interface where you have your ISO control on the top of the camera, your shutter speed control, and even your exposure compensation. Let's first talk about the outside of the camera. As you can see, the DF is slightly chunkier and heavier than the ZF, although the ZF is a very robust Z camera. The DF grip is actually better in our opinion. It's a little bit more recessed, so easier to handhold. And Nikon have supplied an option of a grip made by small rig for the ZF if you need a better grip on your camera. But the real interesting difference is this aperture select dial on the front, or our sub-command dial, as it's called. On the DF, it's flat and flush against the camera, which no other camera had had, and no other camera since has had. Whereas on the ZF, we've gone back to our traditional front and back wheels, which I think make this one a little bit more comfortable to use. Another thing for ZF is obviously because it's smaller and lighter, it's actually more akin to a classic Nikon SLR designs, cameras like FM3, F3, FE2, FA cameras as well. So it's a little bit smaller and lighter. So oh, compared to Nikon DF, it's a little bit more portable this way. But looking at Nikon DF, definitely from the point of just holding it in your hands, it does feel more comfortable straight out of the box without any accessories attached to. Now looking at the back of the camera, the DF from the front, you could easily mistake for a film camera and we have heard many people say that that's happened. From the back, it's very clearly a digital camera with the big screen. With the ZF, you can hide this by actually tilting out and flipping around your screen so that it completely hides the rear LCD. However, the flip out screen is an advantage as well. So if you do need to shoot from more awkward angles or you want to do some selfies, then you can do that with yeah. the ZF. One thing to remember as well is, well, Nikon DF has a traditional DSLR with a real fine art optical viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Nikon ZF has a little screen built in in this. They're called EVF electronic viewfinder in there. So again, for some of you coming from this camera to that one, if you haven't tried mirrorless cameras from Nikon as of yet or any other mirrorless cameras from other manufacturers, you may find the switch will require a little bit of adjustment. It doesn't, it's not to say that the EVF on this camera is not very good. It's fantastic. It's high resolution. Uh, it has a good refresh rate. So overall it feels quite nice, but Coming from optical viewfinder, definitely for me personally, I had to spend a couple of days with those cameras just to kind of make myself comfortable with that. One of the obvious advantages to an electronic viewfinder is the fact that you can actually see your results before you take the picture. So what you see is what you get. You can switch that off if you don't like it, but for the most part, most people are gonna keep that option on, which means that as you change your settings, you can see how it will affect the resulting exposure before you actually take the picture. The other thing is that the image in the viewfinder is a little bit bigger than the optical viewfinder on the DF. So if you do like a larger view in your screen, then you've got that on the ZF. What you may also find that focusing in low light, actually, if you focus manually and use manual focus lenses, it will be a little bit easier in the electronic viewfinder because it just boosts the brightness a little bit. Obviously, optical viewfinder won't be able to do that. So to finalize on build quality, both cameras are kind of half metal, half plastic. Um, Nikon ZF has a brass dials, a metal top. Uh, DF has all metal, no brass there. Technically, 
DF was a kind of a two cameras merged together. So it had the sensor from Nikon D4, which is brilliant low light 16 megapixel sensor with a functionality of Nikon D600, that the kind of a consumer camera they had at the time. So obviously the form factor is slightly different from D600, but like ergonomics uh, processor and focusing system is about the same. Well, Nikon ZF is half part, half metal with a beautiful brass dials, which you can brass if you want to for that beautiful patina, or hopefully you're going to use the camera so much that it will form naturally. <laughs> but overall, from weather ceiling point of view, they're about the same. It's uh, ZF will be comparable with Z6 and Z7 Gen 2 cameras, while Nikon DF will be comparable to cameras like D750 and D600 at the time. So I would say they're more or less about the same consumer level of weather ceiling. Moving on to the internals, as we said, the DF is a 16 megapixel sensor, which was taken straight from the D4, which means low light performance, absolutely fantastic. The 24 megapixel sensor in the ZF is the same resolution as the Z5, Z6 and Z62, but is redesigned. Yes, it's also paired with a newer XP7 processor, which comes from the flagship cameras like Nikon Z9, Nikon Z8. What that means, it makes everything a lot, lot faster. So autofocus speed, processing of the images, everything that you're going to get out of the camera comes from a newer generation, which means that technology wise, this is about, it's about as good as it gets right now. <laughs> At this price point. Yeah. Absolutely. A DF, however, gets autofocus system from D600 camera, which means it's not bad, but it's not on the same level as Nikon ZF. No one is. So if you use notch focus lenses, mm. then definitely you'll see a huge improvement in terms of what's focusing speed on Nikon ZF camera. However, if you use manual focus lenses, there are quite a few differences there as well. Speaking of manual focus lenses, one of the main features of the DF was the fact that you could actually mount pre-AI lenses, so pre-aperture indexing lenses from before 1972, 1971 production, and you could put them straight onto the DF without damaging any contacts. Now, technically, you can do the same on the ZF by putting your pre-AI lens onto an FTZ or FTZ2. Nikon don't recommend it, mainly because they're covering all their bases, but it doesn't actually damage anything on the FTZ and FTZ2. Because there's nothing to damage there, really. So you can do it at your own risk, but we've done it and it's okay. <laughs> Indeed. Now, the other thing that the ZF brings you is your focus peaking through the viewfinder and on the back screen. Focus peaking essentially highlights areas of the frame which are in focus. You can change your sensitivity to very low, medium, regular, or very high, but it means that you can be fairly assured that your picture is going to be in focus before you actually take it. With the DF, people used to change the focusing screen in the viewfinder to a split screen to make manual focusing easier. But unfortunately, this does mess up the autofocus system. Yeah, it's a, the screen that you can install this is a third party one. So Nikon would not recommend it to do that. And you would void your warranty by doing that. Obviously those cameras are no longer sold. So that's not an issue at all. Now, the benefits of having an electronic viewfinder with a manual focus lenses, you can actually zoom in into the image to confirm how sharp the subject is. Obviously with optical viewfinder, you can't do that. Now on top of the magnification, this camera, and it's the first mirrorless camera from Nikon today that allows you a face and eye recognition on uh, manual focus lenses, which means if you have it enabled in the camera, when you photograph on a person or an animal, it will show you the box, the square, and if you press zoom in or OK button, it will go to 100% straight to the eye so you can confirm this. Again, this is the new features that we get because it's electronic viewfinder and the software is de developed around this, while optical viewfinder obviously can't have that feature. Another mention on lens compatibility for you is the fact that the DF, obviously being an F-mount camera, will work with all of the F-mount lenses and will autofocus with even older focus by wire AF nickel lenses. With the ZF, you've got the FTZ adapter, but AF lenses, so of an earlier generation, won't autofocus on this camera. They will be rendered manual focus. And of course, you can't use that lenses on F-mount body, just yeah. for some of you who don't know. So you exactly. No good. one asked, <laughs> but I said it. Just in anyway. case. 
if you don't like the shutter speed dial and you don't want to use that lovely dial that Nikon have included for you, you can put it onto the third step option on both the ZF and the DF, which means that essentially your shutter speed control goes straight back to your main command dial as we're always used to shooting on all of our Zs, all of our DSLRs since time immemorial. Yeah. This hybrid approach um, also has some intricacies where, for example, on Nikon ZF, if you have auto ISO enabled, then whatever you have set on the dial here, then it won't really affect it. This dial becomes obsolete. Now, in our humble opinion, that could be improved on, but Nikon DF does literally the same thing. So in terms of this, our advice really is, if you want to have a modern camera, it may be worth considering other cameras and Nikon lineup. And the good news is that all other cameras in Nikon lineup, except Nikon ZFC as well as ZF, will give you this modern functionality. So again, it doesn't mean you can't use it as a modern camera or with the same wheel sets up, but there are much better options for this available for you. That's right. Um, another thing which is, is specific to the ZF is the fact that this shutter speed dial, although it has a screw thread in it, will not take a cable release. One of the nice things about the DF was the fact that with the screw thread in the shutter button, you could use an old school AR1 cable release and it would actually work with this camera. With this, it's just designed to take a soft shutter release or as we now know it, an AR11. There you go. One interesting thing about Nikon DF Nikon decided not to include video functionality on this camera just because the way they marketed the camera, the way they designed the camera was for still photographers at heart, which means you want to concentrate on the image. The whole marketing campaign was a person somewhere in the Highlands in Scotland walking for three hours, taking their time, taking one shot, put the fire up, go to sleep. It's all worth it. Yeah. So, you know, um, obviously Nikon ZF while designed around steel photography and obviously to bring this nostalgia to the masses, also has a video functionality and it shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. Nikon added video function stuff like zebras, 10-bit recording, all the cutting edge video functionalities that steel photographers may not appreciate, but if you're into video, it's actually quite nice to have. For me personally, I will use this camera for our vlogging as well as still photography, and that will update my Nikon Z6 that we are filming on now. Now let's focus on the ZF for a moment because this camera has all of the latest modern conveniences. Yes, a lot of people call it a Gen.25 camera because it's got a lot of features coming from their flagships like Z8 and Z9. So you've got fast autofocus speed, you've got really good video functionality. You now have a pre-capture in JPEG mode where the camera starts to record the images before you actually press the shutter and then also records the images after you press the shutter, which is new. And Gen 2 cameras like Z6 and Z7 Mark II don't have that functionality. So in terms of technology, this is a really good value right now. You also have quality of life improvements such as USB charging for the battery inside the camera. You've got two memory card slots, so an SD and a micro SD card slot. And let's not forget the IBIS on the sensor or vibration reduction. This one can do up to eight stops with the native lenses, but it also will support all your manual focus lenses, AI, AIS, pre-AI, as well as third party via the adapters. Because the vibration reduction on the sensor, you will have that on the camera. DF doesn't have that. In addition, the VR actually works in the corners of the frame because of a new redesigned vibration reduction or in-body image stabilization unit, which means that even if your focus point is in the corner of the frame, you can still have VR or IBIS focused around that. Last thing is that the camera has a black and white switch. So if you do want to just go straight over to black and white photography, then all you need to do is flick the switch at the top of the camera and you can go straight into black and white mode. It has more than one mode. You've got standard monochrome, you've got a sort of flat monochrome, and then you have a deep tone monochrome as well. This is something that I was actually talking about when the DF came out and how lovely it would be to be able to just have a black and white switch on the camera. You can technically still shoot black and white in the DF. You just have to go into the menu or 
designate one of your function buttons to accessing that option. But it's not quite as clean and easy to do as just the flick of a switch here on the top of the ZF. In conclusion, the DF is still a fantastic camera. Considering that it's 10 years old, I still feel like it holds its own. Oh yes, and at the current price is second hand, it's a fantastic value for money. Now, the features that you get from the DF, if we really summarize it, are the autofocus capability with your older AF D-type lenses, the mechanical shutter release function, overall the mechanical feel of it, and the optical viewfinder. Yeah, so if you want the camera just for steals, on a budget, and if you don't like this whole mirrorless vibe, then this is a fantastic camera. We always recommend you to try it first as well because it will feel different from the other DSLRs that Nikon make, for example, Nikon D850. Now, for everything else, Nikon ZF gives you pretty much all the functionality of this camera except electronic viewfinder, no focus with AF lenses, AFS type lens will be absolutely fine, and no mechanical shutter is button. For everything else, it will allow you to do exactly the same as the Nikon DF. So, pre-AI, AI, AIS, AF, AFS lenses, all we're working with via FTZ adapter. You can also attach a lot of other mount lenses. For example, we tried Leica mount lenses and they perform quite well. You can adapt medium format lenses, all sorts of things that is due to a very large Z mount. The, the large mount itself allows adaptability for a lot of lenses from all sorts of formats, brands and cameras. If we're really nitpicking, there are some things that I prefer on the DF and some things that I don't like about the DF. I don't like the fact that the strap lugs are at the front of the camera instead of the side of the camera. I never understood that design choice. That's just me. I didn't mind, but wasn't a huge fan of that flat aperture mm -hmm. button. However, the DF has a lot more function buttons than the ZF does. If they had thrown in, and I'm talking about Nikon here, if Nikon had thrown in a dedicated AF on button, um, an extra function button on the front of the camera, and even the little joystick toggle that we're used to seeing on the Z6 and Z7 age era of cameras, then I would have been, I think I would have been very happy with this. That's true. I mean, we have Autofocus manual focus switch on the body without mm. going into the menus. We've got bracketing button here as well. Mirror lockup is all in there. Obviously, mirrorless comes with a lot of software development. Mm -hmm. So, but we wish Nikon would have maybe one or two function, extra function buttons just for those reasons. And that's again to do with the hybrid performance of the camera where you can control it as a modern camera, but you can also control it via knobs and dial. And there you have it. If you like this video, please give us a like and a subscribe, and also let us know what you think about these two cameras in the comments. If you would like us to compare ZF with some other cameras, also do let us in the comments below, as well as hit that super thanks button if you can.